Prelude FLNG is a colossal oil and gas project owned by Shell, a leading oil company based in London. It is a collaborative project between Royal Dutch Shell, the Korean Gas Corporation, KOGAS, and Inpex. Prelude FLNG was constructed by Samsung Heavy Industries, specifically at the Gyoje Shipyard in South Korea in 2012. Its underwater equipment was made by FMC Technologies, while the main supplier of its automation and uninterruptible power supply systems was Emerson. Prelude FLNG is located near Broome, approximately 200 kilometers off the northwest coast of Australia. The construction of Prelude FLNG required meticulous precision and a high level of professionalism. Imagine compacting an entire natural gas extraction plant into a floating structure that spans 488 meters in length, all while it floats on the open sea. This includes hundreds of kilometers of pipelines, numerous broilers, and storage tanks ultimately forming what we now know as Prelude FLNG. Therefore, a team of 600 engineers and over 6,000 workers were mobilized to build this massive floating structure. After approximately five years of construction, Prelude FLNG was declared complete. On July 25, 2017, this gigantic vessel was moved from its construction site in South Korea to the waters of Western Australia. The journey covered a distance of 5,800 kilometers, and on September 26, 2018, Royal Dutch Shell officially announced the commencement of Prelude FLNG's operations. The Prelude FLNG vessel measures 488 meters in length, 74 meters in width, 105 meters in height, with a gross tonnage of up to 300,000 gross tons. It is anchored by its turret to 16 steel piles that can be moved on the seabed. Each pile is 65 meters long, with a diameter of 5.5 meters. This behemoth, when fully loaded at 660,000 tons, was constructed using over 260,000 tons of steel. To put it into perspective, the steel used to build Prelude FLNG is equivalent to constructing 35 Eiffel Towers. Its massive size enables Prelude FLNG to withstand the most ferocious ocean waves. To ensure stability, substantial anchors were required to penetrate the seabed, keeping Prelude in a permanent vertical position above the extraction wells. These cylindrical steel anchors are designed to withstand the strongest surface intensities and can withstand Category 5 cyclones, with wind speeds reaching up to 304 km per hour. These anchors are connected by chains that stretch 16,250 meters to reach the seabed. These anchor chains are linked to towers on the vessel, passing through a large vertical column that crosses the structure and remains relatively positioned to the seabed and extraction wells. This allows Prelude to rotate permanently around this axis, offering minimal resistance to wind and large ocean waves. Above the vessel, there is a massive tower securely fastened to the seabed using 16 mooring lines. Each mooring line consists of over 25,000 chains made of strong steel, each about 1 meter in length. These mooring lines are then attached to suction piles that are submerged to a depth of 8 meters on the seabed. For comparison, Prelude FLNG is 126 meters longer than the largest cruise ship today, Harmony of the Seas, which measures 362 meters in length. Furthermore, Prelude FLNG exceeds the Empire State Building's height by 108 meters.
Therefore, it is no surprise that Prelude FLNG is currently declared as the world's largest floating structure. Building such a floating structure requires a substantial investment, and in 2014, Shell estimated that the project could cost up to $3.5 billion per million tons of production capacity. However, some analysts and news sites have reported that the construction cost of Prelude FLNG could reach between $10 billion to $13 billion. Shell's ambitious project has a projected lifespan of 25 years and is expected to produce 5.3 million tons of liquefied natural gas and condensate annually. This includes 3.6 million tons of liquefied natural gas, 1.3 million tons of condensate, and 400,000 tons of liquefied petroleum gas. Because it extracts natural gas from beneath the seabed and then liquefies it, the floating facility requires storage tanks with a capacity of 228,000 cubic meters, divided into six tanks specifically designed to hold natural gas. As its name suggests, Prelude FLNG is designed to extract and liquefy natural gas at sea. The extraction process occurs from underground aquifers. In this process, natural gas is extracted from wells and liquefied by cooling it to minus 162 degrees Celsius. To generate energy for deep freezing, seven steam generators work continuously. Over 50 million liters of cold seawater are pumped into the vessel every hour to cool the gas. This facilitates the liquefaction of gas with significantly less energy required. During the liquefaction process, the volume of natural gas shrinks by 600 times. This process is a crucial innovation as it has reduced costs and eliminated the need for long pipelines to onshore LNG processing plants. However, installing the equipment into a single floating facility presented significant challenges. Upon reaching the plant, the natural gas flows through pipelines and is then transformed into a liquid, significantly reducing its volume before being shipped to the target markets. Once the natural gas extraction process is complete, the liquefied natural gas is loaded onto LNG carrier vessels. Typically, LNG carriers load and unload their cargo at specific ports. However, when operating with Prelude, these LNG carriers must be able to connect to a much higher vessel in open waters for loading. To facilitate this process, at least three tugboats usually assist the LNG carrier. This method also enables the LNG carrier to operate in all weather conditions. The transfer of liquefied natural gas takes approximately 12 to 30 hours. This operation involves significant risks and dangers. If a leak were to occur during the operation, the methane gas that has been liquefied could revert to its gaseous state, potentially causing a fire on the vessel. Moreover, if the vessel were to sink, the methane gas could dramatically reduce the water density beneath the ship, posing risks not only to Prelude but also to the LNG carrier and tugboats. However, the greatest challenge of the extraction process is connecting the extraction platform to the liquefaction plant along with the substantial underwater maintenance costs requiring substantial investments, possibly ranging from hundreds of millions to billions of dollars. Nonetheless, investors in colossal platforms like Prelude FLNG are unlikely to regret their investments. This is because the floating structure can be used for an extended period, and additionally, the floating structure can be relocated from one location to another when the previous oil field has depleted, or it can be brought to the shore for maintenance before returning to exploit gas in other areas. So, how do the crew members reach the Prelude vessel located in the middle of the ocean from the port? 
The answer is that the crew members are transported via helicopters, indicating that Prelude FLNG has a helipad facility. The Prelude vessel also provides comprehensive facilities to support its crew while they work there. These facilities are located in a special building on the vessel that is equivalent in size to the Arc de Triomphe in Paris, France. The building can accommodate up to 300 crew members. Some available facilities include mess hall, dining rooms, ship kitchens, gym rooms, and much more. With its advanced technology and adequate facilities, many people are undoubtedly interested in working on the Prelude platform. However, unfortunately, Prelude has faced several issues and even halted production at times. The first issue occurred in February 2020 when Prelude was temporarily shut down due to reported electrical problems. Even before that, Prelude experienced two incidents resulting in unintended gas release. After its repairs, Prelude resumed production in January 2021. However, on December 2, 2021, Prelude's power supply was disrupted due to a small fire on the vessel. This led to a production halt and most of the crew had to be evacuated. Due to repeated environmental and safety issues, the National Offshore Petroleum Safety and Environmental Management Authority, or NOPSEMA, ordered Shell to cease production indefinitely, pending Shell's ability to demonstrate improved practices. According to NOPSEMA, Shell did not have an adequate understanding of the electrical power system risks at the facility including failure mechanisms, interdependencies, and recovery, Nopsima added that the loss of power on the platform would directly impact safety systems and the ability to safely recruit or evacuate this vessel's crew. In April 2022, Prelude resumed operations. However, operations were partially halted and fully suspended after an 11-week strike that ended on August 25, 2020. A month later, Shell resumed cargo loading operations at Prelude after reaching an agreement with the union representative worker at Prelude FLNG to end the prolonged state. Nevertheless, not long after resuming operations, Prelude FLNG experienced another fire incident. As a result, Shell had to close the unit again in December 2022. Due to this fire incident, Shell had to keep Prelude closed for several months for extensive repair and maintenance. However, according to the latest reports, Prelude FLNG has represented and has been operating normally since early 2023.